Hey, you will have ends. Hey, Ange, good to see you, dude. I know that Ange is already waiting. Figured I'd just go live a little bit early. Don't forget, you need to just make sure that you say hello. <clears throat> say hello on the um, on the chat window, just so I can do the register. I wonder if we're going to have uh, Tom and Michael this time. I hope so. Can I just say, guys, that your microphone that you bought me, Harry, thank you. You know, the, the, everyone, I know that everyone chipped in, and thank you so much. It's working great. I've got a new laptop, so uh, no shaky screen anymore. Yay. Uh, so today's webinar is going to be on calculations. Uh, I posted the revision sheet. Um, I'll continue to post revision sheets for you guys to have a go at, uh, and I'll continue to go through them, but I have been told that um, they, it is optional. We, I don't want you guys to be overloaded with work, and you just need to be doing them if you, if you feel like you want to be doing them. Hey, guys. Hey, Mel. Hey, Liz. Ange hasn't appeared. I think he's having a go at the sheep. Uh, by the way, I hope you guys realized that um, on the worksheet, there's an atom economy question. <gasps> you guys don't do atom economy. It's now we got, it got moved to A-level last year. So don't worry so much if you haven't managed to uh, do the atom economy bit. Anybody who's taking A-level chemistry, though, well worth going through it anyway, and I will do. I'll go through it as if I've taught it to you. Um, <clears throat> right, let's see if I can do the register. Whoop, whoop. I've got a Liz, I've got Harry, I've got Meryl. Yeah! I love you guys. I love you guys. A Liz, a Liz, where are you on the register? They are right at the bottom. And sub, dude, sup. <laughs> oh, sup again. <laughs> yep. How's it going, folks? Do you know what? There are, there are times when I'm like, I quite would like a bit of banter, and you know what? Maybe I should do some of those Google Hangouts. You know, I might, I might start to mix it up a bit. Maybe do a Google Hangout. Maybe do a YouTube video. You know, try and mix it up a bit. No one is as cool as us, Anna. I, I, uh, no one's as cool as me, Ange. Whoa, whoa, hang on a sec. No one's as cool as me. I mean, come on. Have you seen this face? <laughs> I've got Min Wee. Yeah. Yep. Where is she? On the trying to find on the register. There we go. Who else have I got? I've got Ira. Yeah. Cool. Ira. Ira. Good to see you guys. How's everybody holding up? I've got Russell. Yo, Russell. That's a low blow, Mr. Dunking. I love the fact you call me Dunking. I am the king. I am the Dunking. <laughs> oh. Oh, Ants, you've just made my day. Oh, I'm gonna I think I might have to change my name um, by default just to Dunking. King. That'd be amazing. How good would that be? Oh, Mr. Dun King. Oh, yeah. Chemistry King. Chem King. No, I probably shouldn't do that. Make some profit off it. I'm, I'm, I'll give you 1% of all my profits, Ange. <laughs> Still waiting on a couple of people. Uh, it's slow this morning. Still missing, like, everyone. Uh, I, I don't know what stonks is, Russell. What stonks? That's pretty stonks. Don't know what that means. Sue Duncan Donuts for stealing your name. Ah, uh, yeah, I think they may have been before me. <laughs> Don't know. Stonks is stonks. That that really doesn't help me. I uh, I'm not entirely sure what you want me to do with that, Russell. Stonks is stonks. Oh, huh? what? Oh, oh. Evelyn, 
Sup, guys? What's up? What's up, MOM? I can't hear anything. Uh oh. Is there no sound? Julian's in. Can you say hi to Miss Donna for me? Ah, oh, yeah. Meryl says hi, Miss Donna. <laughs> I can hear it. Thanks for that. Morella's in. Julian's in. Emmeline's in. Tom's in. Yo, Tom. Amazing. Tom made it. I've got Morella. I've got Julian. Who else have I got? I'm doing. <coughs> Emmeline. Oh, I've already marked Emmeline. Anyone else? MJ's just arrived. A sheep potato. Uh, I'm still a bit confused by that bit. Yeah, MJ's in. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. There's Hibber. Hibber's in. Yeah. Got Hibber. Right, still missing Aisha. Still missing Elijah, Audrey, Sian, Isha, Marcellus. Oh, Marcellus is in. Sup. Oh, I love the it was just Sue. Wow, this is getting short and short. Eventually, it's going to be Su. Sup, guys. <laughs> no Catherine, no Michael. Right, I think I'm going to crack on with the video. Let's, let's start work. I'm going to have to say um, uh, Sue is his name. Oh. <laughs> Well, that, that's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Oops. My bad. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. I've just proper embarrassed myself there. So sorry. Uh, uh, I, pl please forgive me, Marcellus. Oops. It's okay, Marcy. Yeah, I agree, Ange. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, right. Let's crack on. Share screen. Share screen. Go for that guy. There you go. Cool. So we're up. Okay. So I set you guys a worksheet, and I'm very aware that there was an atom economy question that you guys haven't done, which is fine. Uh, you can always, you can always, um, it's always nice to pick up those A-level bits. It means that the transition from a GCSE to A-level is going to be easier for you guys. So I'll add that in. Uh, to my lesson today anyway, which is nice. Okay, right. So once again, really, really lovely that this worksheet has got another bit of formulae on it. Yeah, I think that's a really nice thing because it's reinforcing what we did last lesson. And that's really, really important. Constant, constant reinforcing of chemistry will make your chemistry better. Okay, so give the formula of the following ionic substances. So nice to level them. So a nice low, a low, uh, a love six, five and six really. That's a lo love five, level five, level four, maybe not a four, five, five, six, yeah, around there. Uh, and we've got the reason is you got to go onto the periodic table and go and get all your ions. There we go. K plus O two minus, and it comes directly from the table. Uh, I'm suddenly realizing I'm on my new laptop now, and so I'm just suddenly realizing that. Uh, I, I don't have a periodic table, so I'm going to have to get myself one, definitely. So let's see if I can get myself a periodic table, because I'm going to need that, definitely. Periodic table GCSE. Wow, that's a bit slow. I have got my CPU turned right down. Let's see if I can crank it up a bit. There we go. Uh, and I want a GCSE one rather than an A-level one. Um, it's... Really nice for me to tell you guys. Oh, do you know what? That's actually a really nice table. That's like perfect for what I need. Oh, Sian's here. Oh, she decided to turn up, did she? Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Save image as. Let's go periodic table. Periodic table. Table. Table late to periodic. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my desktop because I use it all the time. There we go. <clears throat> I can get rid of that now. Cool, 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 cool. So just to quickly explain where this is now coming from. So the periodic table is an amazing piece of kit. I'm just going to uh, whole screen snip it so I can then write on it. I'll also do the register for Sian since she's now just rocked up. 
There we go. There's Ian for safe. Anybody else new? No, nobody else new. So, okay, let's have a look. So we've got, there we go. And I should be able to write on this now. So our question was potassium oxide, I seem to recall. Yeah. So it's just nice to remind ourselves everyone in this row is plus one. Everyone in this row is plus two. Well, there's potassium. So K is going to be K plus. Then we have plus three for all of these guys. Then we have plus three or, sorry, ah. Then we have plus four or minus four. Yeah, but they don't really do ionic. They do covalent rather than ionic, but you can still treat it as such. And then it swaps over. Then we get minus three, minus two, minus one, and then nothing, because they're, again, they're going to be, uh, they're noble gases, they don't react. Although there is questions that do incorporate them because we've now made them into compounds, but I'll come to that another time. Uh, so we've got potassium and then we've got oxygen as O2 minus. Cool. So now we can put them together, cross them down, and we get K2O. Next question B, aluminium bromide, aluminium 3 plus, and Br1 minus. Again, from my periodic table, aluminium plus 3 and bromide 1 minus. Nice to remind ourselves of all of these things. So cross them down. I'm going to get ALBR3. Then we get, right, now we pick up a transition metal. So this is still, this is also a love five. Now we go up to a love six for a transition metal. The reason being is the Roman numeral, of course, is reminding us that it's going to be in a plus three oxidation state. So we've got Fe3 plus. Sulfide is in the same group as oxygen. Yeah, so it's going to be a minus two. So S2 minus, cross and down. This is iron three sulfide. I like, I like that one, Fe. 2s3 next now we're getting now we've jumped up to a love a love seven love seven eight i'm going to move that there but this is a level seven slash eight so the reason being of course is this is a complex ion and you've got to know them magnesium is in group two so it's a plus two oh one minus cross and down gonna need brackets so it's more like a love eight really so we've got MG open brackets OH2. Next, ammonium iodide. Again, a love seven stroke eight. More like an eight because everyone seems to forget the ammonium ion. I don't know why, but they do. NH4 plus, group seven, I minus, but no brackets in this regard. So that's ammonium iodide. Next, calcium nitrate. Calcium is in group two. Nitrate, again, it's a love eight. Yeah, got to learn your ions, folks. It's, by the way, it's a C at A level. Uh, and then we get cross and down. We're going to need brackets again. It's definitely a love eight. Yeah, and then we've got nitrate, and we're going to need two of them. So really nice opportunities. I'm hopefully going to continue to see these when we're doing our revision. The more you do this, the faster this is going to get. And you see the fact that I don't really look at the periodic table all that much these days. I do for some people. Especially ones that I don't recognize, the, the, the oddities of the table. But, like, you get used to this. You, you, you start to retain them. Next, calculate the relative formula mass for the following substances. So they've been really nice. They've given you the translation. They reduced the level by giving you the formula. If they'd just given you the words, that would have been a high level. That would have been a love seven. <laughs> the reason being is you've got to translate it out. Remember, students often forget the two. Remember, any element ending in ene or gen is in a pair. So in this case, you look up chlorine on the periodic table. Chlorine, is, chlorine has two numbers on the periodic table, 17 and 35.5. And of course, the mass number is 35.5. It's in a pair. So we're going to multiply that by two, and we get a relative formula mass. By the way, this isn't a formula mass now. Yeah, this one is going to be a relative molecular mass because it's a covalent compound. <clears throat> Catherine. Hey, Catherine. Good to see you. Do the register. I'll add him on. There we go. So uh, I'm not entirely sure why you've just thrown in benzene. Hi. Nice. Ethene. Hi. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is going to be 71 for chlorine. Next, ammonium sulfate. Oh, okay. Great question. Much higher level. 
So that there, of course, is probably going to be a love five stroke six. It's lower, actually. It's going to be a love five. It's going to be a love five, but because they gave you the formula, maybe even a love four. But uh, now, of course, this is much, much harder. This is jumped now to a love seven, eight. Yeah. The reason being is people are going to forget. They're going to miscount. Yeah. So we've got nitrogen on the periodic table. Let's just write all the people down. Nitrogen on the periodic table has a mass of 14. Hydrogen has a mass of one. Sulfur is 32. Oxygen is 16. I've got two nitrogens, so times that by two. I've got eight hydrogens. That everyone's going to miscount that. They're going to read it as four. We've got one sulfur, but we've got four oxygens. Now, I don't actually know ammonium sulfate off the top of my head. 14 plus 14 plus eight plus 32 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16. Oh, plus 16. There we go. And the answer is 116. Just to give you guys a bit of a heads up for A level, when you come across relative atomic mass and molecular mass at A level, they must be given to one decimal place every time. So at A level, these would be point zeros. Students often ask why. It's because the periodic table then gains a decimal place. So I'm just letting you know, giving you a bit of a heads up. Right. Okay, guys. Now, the level's going up here. We're into love seven. Yeah, we're into love seven straight away just because we're running a reacting mass. These are the questions that are going to make you guys stand out as being different in your exam from the students because most lower ability students or lower attaining students or students who haven't practiced won't be able to do this. Much, much harder. Love seven, eight, really. Because this is one of the hard. Actually, no, it is a love. Yeah, yeah, it's a love seven eight. It's a love seven eight. Okay. So, what mass of sodium? So, my question mark I put on top of my sodium reacts with ninety five grams. Now, I want you to see how I'm taking out the information from the question here, folks. Yeah. What mass of sodium? Ninety five grams of, of tickle. Tickle, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so, I I don't even give a. I don't care. One bit about these guys. Don't care. Yeah, the question's being very specific. Oh, have I made a mistake? Have I made a mistake for... Uh, have I made a mistake for ammonium sulfate? Maybe I did. I did. I didn't do enough... Oh, nuts. I've made a mistake. Thanks, guys. For a moment, I thought I got it wrong. No, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. 14 times 2 plus 8 plus 32, plus 16 times four. I'm so sorry, it's 132, I apologize. Thank you for being on the ball, year 11, appreciate it. Right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna answer this entire question here, because I don't really need anything else. So the first thing is, what, what have I been given? I've been given him. So number one, chemists don't work in grams. To use an equation, we need to work in moles. So step one is get to moles. Number of moles is grams over rams, because I've been given grams, agreed? So let's input the data. Moles is 95 over, right, now I need to work out the relative formula mass. Oh, actually it's covalent, so it's molecular mass. Relative uh, molecular mass of tickle. Titanium, I think, 49? 40, no, no, ah, oh, titanium is 48. Chlorine is 35.5 times four. So we've got, by the way, I'm gonna show you guys what you guys tend to do this. 48 plus 35.5 times four. You will lose that mark, year 11. Please don't do it. Yeah, it's a really bad habit. It's a habit that you guys have picked up and I don't like it. There is a mark for that total. So we need 48 plus brackets, 35.5 times four. And I'm gonna get 190. So I'm now gonna remove that and put the answer there that gives me my mark. If it was A level, it'd be 0 0.0. So now I've got 95 divided by 190. It gives me 0 0.5 moles. This is a really good sign, folks. Yeah, it's a really good sign. 
because the chances of getting a, a like a nice even number like that is very slim in reality. So they've done this deliberately. It's a great answer. Right now, the next step in this equation. So we've just got one two marks at GCSE, folks. We've just picked up two marks. One mark for 190, one mark for 0.5. Now we're going to get our third mark by writing down our mole ratio. And that is, it is a one. I'm actually going to color code this uh, because I like to show you where I get my number from. There is an invisible one there. So that's the ratio. This is the mole ratio. Mole ratio. It's French for ratio. And we're going to go, it's a one to four because there's my number four. Does everyone agree with this? Right, so since it's a one to four, how do I get from here to here? It's a times by four step. So I'm gonna times 0 .2, 0 0.5 by four and I get two. So I now get two moles, two moles of sodium. I've just gained another mark for writing down my ratio. Tick for the ratio. Now, now that I've got two moles of him, I now need to convert out. So I need to reorganize this guy. So bring times both sides by rams. Yeah, that way the rams vanishes on the right and I get grams. So rams times moles gives me grams. So times that by the weight of sodium. Now, by the way, remember, most common mistake is students will now think that sodium needs to be times by four. It doesn't. We've already used it in the ratio. Sodium weighs 23. So 23 times by two, and I get 46 grams. And I'm done. Yeah, does everyone agree with this with me? I'm really tempted to prove that. Now just, I, I know that I wouldn't do this in an exam, but you know, I could, I could arguably say, do you know what, I can prove this. If I just finish off the ratio, then I'm going to have the same number of moles of titanium, 0.5 moles. I'm then going to have the same number of moles of sodium as titanium, of sodium chloride. So two moles of him. Right. Let's now turn those back. So multiply that by titanium, which is 48. Multiply by sodium chloride, which is 58.5. And I'm going to multiply those. So 48 times by 0.5, which is 24. 24 grams, 5.5 multiplied by two gives me 117 grams. And what that now means is what goes in must come out. So this side should add up to that side. So 95 plus 46 gives me 141 grams went in. And I have 24 grams plus 117 gives me 141 grams out. I have definitely got that right. I'm just showing you, you know, and I've done all that. I've done it as an extra, but nice to do it. Right, atom economy. This is not, this is no longer GCSE. Yeah, this is no longer, as of last year, IGCSE. They moved it entirely over to A-level, which I hate, I really do. So I'm just gonna teach what atom economy is. Um, okay, so this is for those students looking to take uh, A-level chemistry. Uh, if you're not, then just, I don't know, switch off. <laughs> so atom economy. Now we have come across another, uh, an atom, sorry, hang on a second, an atom economy. Number one is it's a percentage. Yeah. So it's sometimes actually said to be percentage atom economy. Sometimes is what it's said to be. And what this is saying is this is all about waste because I think everyone here agrees that in chemistry, we are trying to do one thing. We are trying to make products. We put in reactants, we put in reactants and we get out products. So in this case, I've given you the Haber process and we're trying to make ammonia. This is the most important reaction in the whole world. Yeah, this reaction feeds 6.7 billion people. The reason being is, of course, is because ammonia is used to make, to make, notice my capitalization of make, 
is used to make fertilizer. If you put useful fertilizer, you will use it. You will lose it. <laughs> fertilizer. Um, let's balance it. Balance the equation. It's also reversible. So if we balance this, I need two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six hydrogens, six hydrogens. Right. Now, what I want, the reason why I always use this equation for atom economy is because we put in, we put in two reactants. Yeah, these are our reactants. And what we have got out is one single product. So would everyone here agree that there is no waste product? We get what we want out and that's it. Now this is great for a chemist. This is like amazing. It's like, wow, for the chemist. The reason being is because if you get waste, you've got to deal with it. This is just no waste, which makes means that we get more profit. This is better. So what everything that went in has now come out in my product. This has got what is said to be 100% atom economy. All atoms, duh, economy, all atoms put in, so what does this mean? All atoms, all atoms put in are used in, used in product. And that's awesome. No waste, no waste, more profit. So one, so how do you then work this out? So you now, this as a result, this definition here gives us an equation. So percentage atom economy, I'm going to put, I'm actually going to write atom eco, I'm actually going to do it properly. Percentage atom eco equals, it is atoms, it is MR, MR, relative molecular mass, no, atomic mass, relative atomic mass, RAM of desired product of desired product over total R A M in. By the way, you can also put, if you like, you can also put in or out. Now I teach that for a very good reason. Uh, I have to teach, I have to teach uh, the in because it's in the, it's in the definition all atoms in. Yeah, that means I should be doing this one. But in reality, because we balance an equation, all the atoms in will be all the atoms out. And you've done half the work for the out. So let's look at another example question for this. In fact, let's look at the one we've been given. Calculate the percentage atom economy. Right. So what were we trying to make? Well, that is in the question. We're wanting to make titanium. So I now go over to here and go, right. So titanium is the one that I want here, folks. And if titanium is the one I want, then that's my desired atomic mass. So I go percentage atom eco. Atom eco is wanted, wanted AROMR. -A over total AR, MR, out, in or out, either one. I'll put in, why not? Let's do the proper one. Okay, so what did I want? I wanted titanium. So I now go, my, I now equal my percentage atom eco, now equals titanium of 48 over, over everything out. So I have got only one atom of titanium out that I wanted, but I had one atom of titanium out. Uh, sorry, I should look at it from the in perspective. I said I'd do the in. So let's look at everything going in. I've got one atom of titanium, four atoms of chlorine, and four atoms of sodium. So I got one titanium atom out. I got one titanium atom in four chlorines in, 
and four sodiums in. All of these, this is the total number of atoms. So let's now add those up. 48, 35.5, 23. So we now get a total of 48 plus 35.5 times 4 plus 23 times 4. Go. So I get an, a total atoms in of 282. That's a lot in for not a lot out. So I now go 48 over 282, and I get a tiny, oh, times 100. Oh, I how, I'm going to forget it. So easily done. Yeah, I suddenly realized I need to add on that to this over here. That's got to be times 100. Comes out in the wash eventually, folks. Otherwise, I was going to come out with a decimal. Didn't want a decimal. 48 over answer gives me 0 0.17 times 100, and I get 17.0%. That is shocking atom economy. That's going to mean this is going to be a very expensive process. We've got to put reactive sodium metal in. That's expensive. Oh, my goodness. And I've got to put in four moles of sodium for every one mole of titanium I get out. Man, this is an expensive process. Cool. Okay, so let's move on. Right, this one, of course, is GCSE. Ammonia is made by the reactions of nitrogen and hydrogen. They're given us the Haber process. Isn't that lovely? Just to throw out to the chat, can someone give me the pressure, the temperature, and the catalyst, please? So calculate the maximum mass of ammonia that could be formed from a reaction of 12 grams of hydrogen reacting with nitrogen. Right, okay. So I've got 12 grams of hydrogen, and they're asking me to calculate the mass of ammonia. I don't even care about the nitrogen. Don't care. Yeah? So I'm going to do my entire... Well, I'm not going to do my entire answer there. That would be silly. So let's rewrite this. Nitrogen plus hydrogen in equilibrium to produce ammonia, two and three. I've been given 12 grams. 12 grams of hydrogen, and I want ammonia. Right. Chemists don't work in grams. We work, pressure is 250 atmospheres, well done, metal. Temperature, 400 Celsius. Keep going. Catalyst, it's actually 450 metal. Same as a yellow Bunsen burner flame. And it's actually 200 atmospheres. You've switched over the 50. Yeah, they'll sting you for that. 200 atmospheres, 450 degrees Celsius. Oh, don't worry, Mel. That's why I asked. Thank you for trying. What's the catalyst? So, chemists don't work in grams. We need moles. Number of moles is grams over rams. Okay? So, what does hydrogen weigh? It weighs two because each hydrogen is one and it's in a pair. Yeah, it is not six. Do not make that mistake. Yeah? So I'm going to have six moles here, six moles of hydrogen. Right, what's my ratio? It, my ratio is now a three to two. That's awkward. How do I get the number three to the number two? I'm going to divide it by three to get me to one, and then I'm going to times it by two to get it to two. So I'm going to do six divided by three times by two. 6 divided by 3 times by 2 gets me 4. So I'm going to make 4 moles of ammonia. Right. Can't give it in moles, need it in mass. What's the weight of ammonia? Ammonia weighs 17. 14 plus 1 times 3 gives 17. Yeah, times that by 4, times 4 by 17, and I get a mass of 68 grams. We have to make a big, a big um, assumption here that the nitrogen is in excess. Yeah, we've got plenty enough. But there we go. Next, in the reaction, calculate the percentage yield. Oh, in this reaction, only 15 grams was formed. 
Uh, I put iron ore hematite in my notes as the catalyst. No, that's wrong. It's iron metal. Sounds wrong, though. Yeah, it's iron metal, Meryl, is the catalyst. And the ore for iron metal is hematite. Uh, but it's iron metal is the catalyst. And it's actually powderized and put on a ceramic surface, a ceramic mesh. Yeah, uh, but it's iron metal is the catalyst. Right, so what's my percentage yield? Percentage yield, we do this at GCSE, is the actual, actual out versus theoretical out, which we just calculated, times 100. Right. So the question says, we actually got 15, but I expected 68 times by 100. So I got 15 over 68 times 100, and I got a 22% yield. That's a bit rubbish. It's a bit rubbish, that. Suggest so two reasons why the yield was less than 100. Number one, this is really important. Haber process, the reaction is in equilibrium. The reaction is reversible. Reaction is reversible. Therefore, I'm never going to get 100. Yeah. Second one, perhaps there is unreacted hydrogen. Perhaps the uh, nitrogen wasn't in excess. Yeah. Maybe there were side reactions. Maybe the reaction did not complete. Um, Reaction did not finish. Perhaps he didn't leave it long enough for the equilibrium to be established. Yeah, for the reaction to complete. Reaction did not finish. Um, side reactions, another good one. Side reactions. Perhaps the nitrogen wasn't enough height and wasn't enough nitrogen, maybe. N2. Anyway, loads of ideas there that you can use. Next. Right. In an experiment, four grams of calcium was reacted with four grams of chlorine. One of the chemicals was in excess. Determine which limiting reagent and then calculate the mass of calcium chloride formed. Right. This is now level eight, folks. This is a love eight, love eight, nine. A limiting reagent question, much more challenging. Right, so I've got four grams of calcium and I've got four grams of chlorine. Chemists don't work in grams. We work in moles. Number of moles is grams over rams. What does calcium weigh? Calcium weighs 40 on the periodic table. Four over 40. It's going to be 0.1 in it. 4 divided by 40 gives me 0.1 moles. Next, chlorine. Chlorine weighs 35.5, but it's in a pair. Yeah, so it's going to be 71 grams over rams. 4 over 71 gives me 0 0.0563 moles. Look at the ratio. The ratio is a one to one. There is more of that than that. So calcium, there is more moles of calcium than chlorine. So excess, excess calcium. Yay. Right, now that there's excess calcium, we just ignore it to work out the calcium chloride output. Yeah? Because I know that the, that's good. This, the chlorine is going to be the limiting reagent. Yeah, this is the limit. What's going to happen is the chlorine is going to get used up and there's going to be leftover calcium. So I ignore that one and I go, all oh, right, what's the ratio? What is the ratio of chlorine to calcium chloride? It's a one to one. That's nice. So the number of moles is going to be the same. I'm going to make that many moles of calcium chloride. Right, can't leave it in, gra in moles, need to switch it to grams. What's the MR of calcium chloride, which is calcium, of course, is 40. Chlorine is 35.5, but there's two of them. So I've got 40 plus 35.5 times 2 gives me 111. 
and I'm going to get 111 multiplied by 0 0.0563 gives me a mass of 6. Point, I'm going to get 6.25 grams. So there's my output. What's the atom economy? Well, there's no waste product, so it's 100%. That equation there has a 100% atom economy because there is no other products. I like it. Hard that. Next. Oh, no. It's a story. Wow. Describe how the titration is done. They, what's the... Uh, okay. All right. So, 25 centimeters cubed. Let's highlight the data. 25 centimeters cubed of solution of calcium hydroxide was titrated against, yeah? And it says hydrochloric acid, 26.5, right. So there's the 25. The 25 is gonna go into the, into the conical flask. That's gonna be using a pipette, a graduated pipette, a G pipette into conical. Next, we know that a burette of course, can produce variable volumes. I put the, oh yeah, okay. So this guy is gonna be the burette, right? So what we're gonna say is number one, using pipette, using graduated, I'm gonna zoom in, using graduated pipette, using graduated pipette, place, 25 centimeters cubed of CA brackets OH2 into conical flask. Into conical flask. Next. Right, I'm now going to add an indicator. What indicator am I going to use? Well, it's a strong base, um, so I'm going to use methyl orange. Yeah, so methyl orange is going to be the right answer. So add a few drops, a few drops of, sorry, it's phenolphthalein, sorry. Phenol, P-H-T-H-A-L-E-I-N, phenolphthalein to flask. Right, fill burette, fill burette with 0 0.1 moles per dm cubed HCl. Take start reading. I'm going to put brackets using funnel. Using funnel. Place white tile underneath conical flask. <laughs> yeah. Uh, take start reading. Take start reading. Add, um, I'm actually going to put on, on the place, place on white tile. It's nice to do that. They're not going to care about that one, but whatever. Place on white tile. Place conical flask on white tile. I need, I just want to be clear. Place conical flask on white tile. Add, add acid quickly at start. At beginning, drop by drop near end point. Stop when permanent color change. Stop when permanent color change. Next. Stop and permanent color change, take end reading. Take final reading. Take final reading. Repeat, repeat until concordant. Concor, concordant results. I know, I know guys, that seems insane. Yeah, that is going to be six marks in your GCSE, and you've got to know it. I know it's a horrible story. I know, 
do the best you can yeah right now calculate the concentration of the calcium hydroxide right so let's take the data the calcium hydroxide i had and then 26 and we'll say 26.3 and then 25 and the hydrochloric acid was 0.1 right let's zoom back in right so this was centimeters cubed this was centimeters cubed and this is moles per dm cubed yeah there we go okay first thing i'm going to work out the moles of this guy yeah so number of moles is c times v over a thousand because i'm in centimeters cubed right concentration 0 0.1 times by 26.3 all over a thousand 0 0.1 times by 26.3 divided by 1000 and i get an answer of 2.63 times 10 to the minus 3. what is the ratio the ratio is two to one it's a two to one ratio i wouldn't write it up there in my exam I would actually, in my exam, if I couldn't fit it on, I'd put that. That's what I would actually do. Write that somewhere. Right, so I need to halve it, folks. Divide by two. Divide that number by two. Gives me 1.315 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, now I've got the volume. I've got moles. Reorganize my equation. Need to reorganize that for concentration. So times both sides by 1,000 times both sides by a thousand, gets rid of the thousand from one side. Next, divide both sides by V. Yeah, we'll get rid of the V from either side. There we go, gives me C. So, final equation. It's going to be number of moles times a thousand over 25 gives me times a thousand, one, 1.315 times 10 to the minus 4 times 1,000 divided by 25, and I get a concentration of 0.0. I'm going to move that. Don't like it being there. Concentration of 0.0526 moles per dm cubed. Cool. Last one. <coughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, this is a very, very common Edexcel game, this one. We, it wants me to go from moles per dm cubed to grams per dm cubed. And I don't want you guys to overthink this. It's really easy. If you have moles per dm cubed and you want to change it to grams per dm cubed, what I want you to realize is that hasn't changed. The DM hasn't changed, so I can ignore it. I just need to get from moles to grams. How do I do that? Grams over rams. Number of moles is grams over rams, but I want grams. Reorganize. Multiply both sides by rams, and I get that. So I just need to know the weight of calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide is, so I'm going to get one mark. Calcium is 40. The oxygen is 16 times 2. Hydrogen is 1 times 2. Total for calcium hydroxide, 40 plus 16 times 2 plus 2. So it gives me 74. One mark for that guy at A-level, 74.0. I'm now going to multiply the moles per dm cubed by that number, and I get my answer in grams per dm cubed times by 0 0.0526. And I get an answer of 3. 0.89 times 10, oh, 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 3.89 mol, uh, grams per dm cubed, and we're done. Guys, that brings us to the end of the lesson. How useful is that? I think that was a really nice worksheet. Really, really lovely. So let's go back to here. Taking away my sound. There we go. Back to there. Bye, guys. We're done. I will post another revision sheet you don't have a go at if you want to do it um it's just good practice folks um don't worry if you can't do it it's just nice to have you here on lesson i don't want to overload you with work just do the best you can it's so good to see you year 11. i miss you guys terribly and i hope that you're all okay and, and you're keeping safe and you're doing lots of practice you're you're doing great and i really appreciate you coming to my lessons it's great to see you guys have a great weekend everybody take care